everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. So back in the beginning of 2020, I wanted to do this video and then just never got a chance, but now I am finally getting around to it and that is the top YA books of the 2010s. So basically celebrating the last 10 years in YA literature, which I have been actively reading since 2010 and before that and all the way through to now. So I do know the all the books that have been published in that time pretty well and have definitely seen an explosion of YA. It has just changed so much in the last 10 years and I think that this will kind of help explore that a little bit just for my own self when I was looking up the different publishing years of all the books. It was kind of hard to choose in the beginning of the 2010s just like the books that I had read and had enjoyed enough to want to mention them on this list were kind of few and far in between whereas when we get to like 2016 and beyond trying to choose between them was almost impossible because there were so many on the list that I loved So it's really interesting just to kind of see where that shift takes place and where the YA market kind of exploded because it was not as fruitful as it is now and a lot of the books that were on the lists that were YA published in 2010, 2011, 2012, all that are kind of forgotten to time that no one talks about even if they were ranked high up on the list of top YA books of that year. So it's really interesting to see kind of what series ha and what books have stood the test of time and which ones have been kind of forgotten and which ones in overall market trends towards what's selling and what's being written and I think personally also that since there's been more of a demand for YA, the talent in YA literature has gone up as well. It gets more competitive to publish a book in YA, which just means that higher, higher caliber of books are being published, which is great for us readers that like to read in the genre. So I put forward a few rules for myself when putting together this list, and that was that I only wanted one book per series to put on the list. Otherwise, it could be like my favorite series and a book came out one a year for like four or five years and then that takes up pretty much the whole list so I kind of have limited to it limited it in that way and also I'm only doing each author once as well even if there are different series that are on the lists just for that same reason because Cassandra Clare kind of dominated the beginning of the 2010s and I mean she still does today but especially when there were less books of that caliber being published back then so I think it's, I didn't put that limit. I would maybe just choose Shadowhunter books for everything because you know, I love Shadowhunters, but we are here to discuss a plethora of different books and I'm choosing one from each year and it is going to be the year in which they were published and not the year in which I read them. So without further ado, let's start off with 2010. The book that I'm choosing for 2010 is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. And if you know me, you know that The Infernal Devices is my absolute favorite series in all of shadow hunters i just love the story of will Jem, and tessa tessa is someone in YA literature that i really look up to and see myself in um maybe more so than any other YA character so i just really adore the series with all my heart and 2010 is when it all started and i'm pretty sure i did read this book originally in 2010 2011 i think maybe i read it around the time clockwork prince came out because my best friend melissa was like you know i made you read the other shadow hunters books and you like them but like you need to read this because it's even better and we did go to a clockwork prince signing together in 2011 and we got our book signed there it's pretty cool like we knew shadow hunters before they were cool <laughs> and yeah i just adore everything about the series and so it is my pick for 2010 and because of that cassandra claire will not make another appearance on this list and i feel like i just had to choose this one because it is such a strong start to the infernal devices series even though clockwork princess will forever have my heart it came out in a year that was a bit more competitive with other really good uh books so tessa gray is from new york but she makes the journey over to London to search for her brother after their aunt dies. Once she is there, she is captured by creatures from London's underworld and discovers vampires, warlocks, and so much more. After she is kidnapped by the mysterious Dark Sisters, she finds out that she herself is a downworlder with a rare talent, the power to transform into anyone. And the Magister, the head of the club to which the Dark Sisters belong, will stop at nothing to have Tessa for his own. 
after being broken out of the Dark Sisters lair by two shadow hunters, Tessa takes refuge in the London Institute, where she finds herself fascinated by and torn between two best friends, Jem, whose fragile beauty hides a deadly secret, and Will, whose volatile moods keep everyone in his life at an arm's length, except maybe Tessa. And I love the end of this tagline, it goes, that love may be the most dangerous magic of all. It's just perfect. Oh, what more can I say about this series? I just love it so much and I had to choose it as my 2010 book because this is when perfection started. For 2011, we move on to a classic dystopian and that is Shatter Me by Tarada Mafi. I read Shatter Me last year and I did really enjoy it and while it didn't make my top books of 2019 or anything like that, for what was published in 2011 with my as previously stated rules, this was the book that came out on top and I think Mockingjay was the last of the Hunger Games books obviously to be published and that was published in 2010. So right around this time, the follow on to the Hunger Games series all started popping up. So like that's when we started getting uh, Divergent and Maze Runner and all those different series. And so Shattered Me is part of that wave of dystopian that followed the popularity of the Hunger Games. No one knows why Juliet's touch is fatal, but if she touches someone, she has the power to kill them. The reestablishment has kept her locked up in jail, but now they are setting her free with plans to use her as the ultimate weapon. After a lifetime without freedom, Juliet is finally discovering the will to fight back for the very first time. And this is the beginning of the Shattered Me trilogy. What's really interesting about it is that if you can see here, it's um, written with strike throughs uh, through a lot of the text. And I thought it was such a cool literary device that really hasn't been done before or after to kind of like signify how Juliet's thought process is um, when she is kind of having these like frantic panicked thought processes and she's like it's like her stream of consciousness and crossing out the thoughts and I think it's a really cool device to kind of go inside the mind of someone that is probably suffering from PTSD and is under this like tremendous sort of strain and so it's, it's really cool really inventive in I think it made a mark for itself in the dystopian genre which is why there are still books coming out in this series today such as Imagine Me which is the last book in the series that has been released and it was released about a month ago and I still have the last two books in that series to read so hopefully I'll get to them soon but I do really think that this is a cool dystopian book and it is the winner of my picks for 2011. Next is 2012 and this is a series that I adore. It is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Oh my god this is the start of the Lunar Chronicles and this is just like such a classic in YA at this point I feel like and I am really really happy that I read them because I never thought I would like them. I remember seeing this in Target, seeing it everywhere when it first came out in 2012 and I just never picked it up. I wasn't especially reading YA in that time period but even so like I had known about it, had recognized this cover and I'm like I really don't think I would like a cyborg Cinderella retelling okay. and I thought that so much up until when my friend Melissa in 2018 was like hey you should read the series and I'm like eh, I don't know if I'll like it like I got the book from the library because I wasn't sure if I wasn't even gonna like it enough to want to purchase it even though I am a book purchaser so it's funny that I ended up adoring this series so much I now have a set of the books and uh yeah it's just it's really fun really cool YA sci-fi fairy tale retelling each of the books Cinder, Scarlet Crest, and Winter take on a retelling of a famous fairy tale but with sci-fi elements and all of the characters kind of come together and it makes it like a full cast towards the end and the last book and I adore it. Cinder is set in New Beijing where humans and androids roam the streets together. Cinder is a gifted mechanic however an accident when she was young means that she is part cyborg because in this world when tragic things happen to you they can replace them with things that are part machine, but then that makes you a second class citizen and cyborgs are not seen as fully human. However, Cinder's life soon becomes entwined with the handsome Prince Kai's after a chance meeting at the mechanics place where she works. Suddenly, Cinder finds herself in the midst of an intergalactic struggle and a forbidden attraction. Yeah, I mean, and this series just gets like more sprawling and more intricate as it goes along with each book and you discover more and more about the different characters. I really adore it and it is a uh, book that came out in 2012. So it's my 2012 pick. <clears throat> 
so now for 2013 i am picking crown of midnight by sarah j mass sarah j mass was pretty much publishing one or so thrown in glass book a year in the 20 tens and even though i could put multiple of her books on this list for any of these years i chose 2013 as crown of midnight because of the 2013 books i felt like sarah j masses was the strongest in within that list and there were other books that i wanted to pick in other years so not saying that crown of midnight is necessarily my favorite in the throne of glass series but comparatively to the other years her series stands out the strongest even though i love the throne of glass series with my whole heart and, i mean crown of midnight is fantastic so this is the sequel to throne of glass and so i will just give a summary for the first book throne of glass in which selena sardothian is a fresh out of a year serving as a slave in the salt mines and after she's been arrested for being an assassin and she is brought to the king's castle to compete to be the champion otherwise known as the official killer of the kingdom however as con contestants start dropping off one by one there is so much more at play and dark forces arising and in crown of midnight we follow the fallout of these trials to become the champion and Selena's shifting loyalties to the crown and she has some mysteries to entangle in opposing forces at play within the glass castle. So yeah, love the Throne of Glass series endlessly and Sarah J Mass is a queen of publishing YA in the 2010s as she has pretty much dominated those lists of top YA books published in those years for pretty much every year since she was consistently putting out books in this series. In 2014, we have Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefvater, which is the third book in the Raven Cycle, which is a quartet of books that follows a group of boys and their friend Blue as they embark on a quest to find this forgotten king but it's like more than that like blue comes from a family of psychics and it's kind of this urban paranormal romance and maggie steve otter just has this wonderful flowy way of writing and i actually read this whole quartet in three days so that's four books in three days because i couldn't put it down because i was just so addicted to the story the lyrical way that the it's written like it's just very magical and mystical and just keeps you turning the pages I love, love this series. I love the interactions between the characters. And I think Blue Lily, Lily Blue might have been my favorite, but they honestly, I read them so fast, they all blend together. So yeah, it's just a really cool series. And I really loved this one. And it is my top YA book of 2014. In 2016, the first book of a well-loved duology on booktube was published and that is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I absolutely love this installment in the Grisha verse and I think that Six of Crows for me is better than the Grisha trilogy just because I love this cast of outcasts and the way that the plot is structured I think is really smart. While we were in Ravka for the Grisha trilogy, Six of Crows takes us to Ketterdam, which is loosely based on Amsterdam. It is a bustling hub of international trade, and here we follow six outcasts who come together to pull off one impossible heist. Kaz, Inej, Nina, Matthias, Jesper, and Wylan must come together in order to pull off this heist and get something that each of them are searching for, as well as an insane amount of money. <laughs> Can they pull off this heist? guess you'll have to see but what's really cool about this book is that it's told between present day and flashbacks and through the flashbacks we get to see the motivations behind why each character wanted to join this little gang of outcasts and go on this heist even though the odds seem stacked against them and learn more about their motivations and what drives them and i just thought that that was a really cool way to explore each of their characters because we do get that for each of them and it i mean i just like adore them as this cast of characters and i think the heist is very it's very action-packed and I love it and it came out in 2015. In 2016, Gemina was published, which is the second book in the Illuminae trilogy by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I love the Illuminae Files. It is such a cool series. It is told in docket format. So we have emails and IMs and some pages like this that are very 
really coolly laid out and it's just a very visual and fun reading experience however the audiobooks are also awesome um but i do really like reading it physically just because of the, the way that it's laid out and i love when you take off the cover it looks like this so it's like a little file that is redacted in 2575, an illegal mining settlement on the distant ice planet of Carenza is attacked by a corporation, and so the survivors must get on a spaceship and flee. However, they are tracked through space by this corporation that is trying to end them. In Gemini, we follow the story of Hannah Donnelly and Nick Malakov, who are currently residing on the way station Heimdall as Katie Grant, Ezra Miller, and the crew of the Hypatia from the Illuminae Files head towards the way station Heimdall where Hannah and Nick live. An attack by Bytech is carried out on this way station. Now Hannah and Nick are thrown together to defend their home and to help the Hypatia in any way that they can. However, it's not so hard as alien predators are picking off the crew one by one and a malfunction in the wormhole could obliterate them all. I just thought that this dossier format is just so great and I love Hannah and Nick's story. I think that they have a really good chemistry and just the plot twists in this novel in particular were insane. Like I remember reading this book and my heart was pounding. I couldn't put it down. Like it was just so phenomenal, so well done and definitely my favorite in the series. I really do need to give this series a reread at some point because I just love it so much. And it is my winner for the best YA book of 2016. For 2017 should come at no surprise for anyone because it is one of my favorite books ever. And that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And of course it says on the back, it was impossible possible of course but when did that ever stop any dreamer from dreaming this series just has so many beautiful lyrical quotes laszlo strange is a war orphan who is left to be raised in a library for his whole life he's been fascinated with the city of weep which is a city whose name has been lost to the world no one can remember its true name only that it is to be known as weep after an invasion and war ruined the city. Laszlo has always, always dreamed of going to weep, but he's too cowardly to take on this feat on his own. However, opportunity pre presents itself in the form of a person called the God Slayer and a band of legendary warriors looking for recruits in Laszlo's city. And so as he joins with the caravan, he goes into the city of Weep to search for the answers to what exactly happened 200 years ago that cut it off from the rest of the world. And I mean, just beautiful descriptive lyrical writing, just the way the story unfolds is just absolutely absolutely amazing it is captivating and it is one of my favorite YA stories so it had to had to had to be my pick for this category because I just adore this book and I'm thankful every day that it was published and brought into the world for 2018 I'm going to choose The Cruel Prince by Holly Black I absolutely adore this trilogy the last book just came out in November of last year and I just think the whole <laughs> series is phenomenal but The Cruel Prince is a really really strong start Jude was seven when her parents were murdered and her mother's fairy general ex-husband whisked her and her sisters away to fairy. As a mortal growing up in the land of the Fae, she is at a severe disadvantage. However, Jude wants more than anything to prove herself and earn a place at court. Benny Fay despised the humans, especially Prince Cardin, who may be the cruelest prince of them all. As Jude becomes more embroiled in palace intrigues and deceptions, she just might discover some cruelness of her own. I adore this whole series, the character arts, everything. I just love Jude as a character because she's so power hungry and not afraid to be that way. Nothing will stop her to get what she wants and it's just an amazing series and the first of this trilogy was published in 2018 which is wild because both the second and the third books were published in 2019 so it's pretty cool. And for my final pick for this list, best book of 2019 is literally no shock to anyone if you've seen my top books of 2019 channel or were around my channel in 2019 and that is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I adore 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 this book so much. It is a standalone fantasy and Margaret Rogerson's writing is just so beautiful and it completely captivated my heart. It's funny because on book two people have mixed opinions. Some people loved it, some people were mad on it, some people didn't like it but I'm one of those people that absolutely adored it and 
will treasure this book forever because of how much it meant to me. I actually read it twice in 2019, which is crazy because I never really reread books in the same year. So yeah, I just, I loved it that much. And I loved it the second time as much as I loved it the first time. Elizabeth has been raised as a foundling in the great library of Ostmere. She's been raised to believe that all sorcerers are evil. Growing up among the books that are the tools of sorcery, the magical grimoires that have sentience of her own, she yearns to become a warden and protect these sentient books from ever stepping out of line and transforming into grotesque monsters. When an act of sabotage on the library frames Elizabeth for the crime of setting one of the most dangerous grimoires free, she is torn from her home and has to face justice in the capital. With no one to turn to except her sworn enemy, a sorcerer named Nathaniel Thorne, and his mysterious demonic servant, Elizabeth finds herself entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy. I don't know, I just love Elizabeth's character. I love her and Nathaniel's dynamic. I love Silas. I just love this whole book. I love the descriptions, especially of like the libraries and the books having minds of their own. And there are just some beautiful, beautiful scenes in here. I love the way the plot unfolded. And I just really, there's something about this book that spoke to my heart. And that is why it is my pick for the top YA book of 2019 and one of the top books in my heart. So there you have it. Those are my picks for the top books of the past decade, the 2010s. What a crazy time for YA publishing. It's really cool to kind of reflect on the way that books have changed over this period. And I'm excited to see where YA publishing will go in the 2020s. So please leave a comment down below if you like any of these books or what your favorite book from a particular year is. I'd love to hear about it and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.